Hi guys, my name is Michael and this is channel not just for the PS Vita fans, welcome! Recently I was trying to set up a Retroflow launcher, it didn't really work out and it also didn't really work out for you either as I've seen in the comment section. However, there were some new updates released and it is working fine for me now. Therefore, in today's video, I would like to share a quick tutorial on how to set it up correctly and how you can display and launch all your retro games and homebrews in style. So, without any further ado, let's dive right into it. Retroflow Launcher was developed by Jimbob4000 and it is forked from Hexflow Launcher developed by VitaHex. Huge thanks to them. I'm following the setup guide from the official GitHub release page, link is down below. Retroflow Launcher is a 3D cover flow like uh, launcher for PS Vita. It supports wide variety of systems and you are gonna need Adrenaline for PSP and PS1 games, Didel's X64 for Nintendo 64 games and RetroArch for all of the other systems like NES, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, etc. I don't have RetroArch installed, thus I'm primarily focusing on PSP and PS1 games, ports and homebrews, I've tried some N64 games and in the end I'm also comparing Retrofall Launcher to the Hexfall Launcher. So first how to install it? You need to download and install two VPKs, Retrofall Launcher, uh, which is an app used for browsing the games, and Retroflow Adrenaline Launcher, which is an app needed for launching PS1 and PSP games. Install both of them and next step is perform preferably on your PC. I guess you can rename all of the PSP and PS1 games manual as well, but it would uh, be very time consuming, therefore we are using the tool called PSP ISO Renamer tool for Windows PCs. Download it, run it and rename ISOs or CSOs using the following parameters Name, Region and ID And the result should look something like this In the Renamer tool there isn't the exact preset template for this option So you need to tick the box and manually type in all the percentage brackets and square bracket symbols uh, But other than that it's pretty straightforward and it's done in a matter of minutes now we are finished with renaming and we can launch the Retrofall Launcher for the first time. It will take some time, so unless it crashes, just let it do its thing. Uh, when it's running and you can see all your games listed in different categories, you can start to download the covers one by one. With official PS Vita games, you just press triangle and then choose an option to download the cover. And that's it. Your cover will appear instead of the default bubble image. With the homebrew games and ports, it's a bit more trickier. Some covers are not available at all, so you gotta download it manually and put them in the correct folder. Other covers are downloaded fine, but they won't appear on your launcher unless you move them into a different folder. For example, for all the GTA ports, the covers uh, can be downloaded fine, but the images go into the Sony PS Vita folder instead of the homebrew folder. So, in order for them to display correctly, you gotta manually transfer it from UX0 data slash retroflow slash cover slash Sony PS Vita into the homebrew folder with the same path. For the PSP and PS1 games, uh, the covers are easily downloaded, assuming you've renamed them in the correct recognizable form. Then again, you just press triangle and click on download cover and it will appear straight away. It works with official PSP games, uh, not so much with homebrews, as those gotta be done manually. I've been trying to add covers to N64 games as well. The games appeared in the launcher no problem after I've moved them into the UX Data Retroflow ROMs Nintendo 64 folder. However, I couldn't download the covers from the launcher, even though the games are named in the correct format. I've been even trying to download uh, my own cover and put it into covers folder with the matching name, but that didn't work out either. If anybody got them working, please let me know how I can do it too. Cheers! So, as I said, I'm not using RetroArch, but if I understand it correctly, the process is exactly the same like with Didel's X64. You gotta move the ROMs into correct folder for them to appear, and you gotta rename them into correct form for the covers to be found. And what are my first impressions from the usage of the Retrofall Launcher, you may ask? Uh, my first impressions are honestly very positive. The installation and setup process was not so complicated and it was also fairly quick. 
I've experienced some crashes, mostly when I was trying to download the covers and not so much when I was just browsing through the app. The visual experience is undoubtedly very eye-pleasing and overall I do recommend to install it if you like what you see or if you haven't succeeded on the first try, you should absolutely try it again as I'm sure you will only move forward from now on. The Retroflow Launcher is a neat app that deserves to be used to browse through and launch our retro games with all the bells and whistles. The interface is simple yet appealing and I'm looking forward to upcoming updates where hopefully I can add my custom music to complement the glamorous appearance. Uh, when I compare it to Hexflow Launcher, it's basically the same thing besides the retro part and also the PSP and PS1 games uh, and covers are acquired much more hassle-free. In Hexflow Launcher you can display PS Vita, homebrews and ports, PSP and PS1 games and Retroflow Launcher is an updated version of it so naturally it has more features and more usability and I will be proudly using it in times to come. And what about you guys? Are you gonna try it or are you using it already? Let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, watch some more, share, it means a lot to me and to the YouTube algorithm. From now on, I will be also featuring my Amazon affiliate links down below, so if you will click on it and buy anything, not just my recommended items, I will earn small commission. Don't forget to check out our Discord server, where you can find out about everything up front. Sub to the channel to not miss upcoming videos, there is at least one coming out every week. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.